Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am going to be talking yet again about uh, the demise of Kevin Samuels. Um, his death has sparked a lot of conversation on the internet. A lot of people are shocked. Some are devastated. Some are just dumbfounded as to how something could happen so quickly with no type of warning. Um, no evidence that the man was even sick. Um, it just happened. Uh, one day he put up a video, the next day he was gone. Because everyone is in tune with what is happening with him, everyone's putting out commentary. Some people are putting out rest in peace videos. Some people are giving tributes. Some people are making some very, very obvious points. Those who were not fans of his are talking about the toxicity of his cha channel and the nature of his commentary. I believe that it's very important that the spiritual aspect is looked at as well. Whenever these types of situations arise, um, this is what has people's attention right now. This is where the attention of a lot of YouTubers, especially black YouTubers are. Now this story was picked up by mainstream media as well because of his rather large internet presence, social media presence. And so I think it's very important that a spiritual voice is added to this as well. Uh, so many have broken this down spiritually. Some people have talked about the health of this man as to why um, he may have died of cardiac arrest, what he may have been consuming. A number of different angles have been presented, but again, the spiritual aspect needs to be looked at as well. And some are doing that. I'm going to be coming to you from scripture to show that there was a lot of spiritual corruption with this content that he put out. Uh, so the question is this, did God shut Kevin Samuel's mouth for corrupting men and women's thinking? So we are going to take to scripture for that, okay? Uh, because apparently a lot of people are under the belief that he was God's voice in this hour. God, as the world calls him, I call him by his name. You see, a lot of people, um, especially men, were believing that he was God's voice in this hour because he was talking about things that they agreed with. He had a very negative um, opinion about black women, about their appearances, about their ages, about the fact um, that many of them are unmarried or have uh, children that were born out of wedlock, single parent households. Um, he was laying a lot of charges at the Daughters of Zion. Uh, he would even taunt them about uh, dying um, alone. There was just a number of different things that uh, this man talked about that was very toxic. But it does, didn't stop there. So I'm going to go to scripture. I want to go to scripture for those of you who don't understand that there are spiritual consequences to things or to actions, even words. Especially those who were calling him God or Godfather or the goat. A lot of men actually placed this man as their head over the Most High. Many were saying that he changed their lives. Religious men. But the Most High was unable to change their lives because many are unrepentant, still in their sins, still living very wickedly. So what change did this man enact in your life that the Most High himself could not do? Anyway, we are going to go to Titus chapter 1 verses 9 through 11 and we are going to see if the Most High indeed is responsible for shutting Kevin Samuel's mouth. Titus chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. It says, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught that he may be able to by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, specific, especially they of the circumcision, meaning from the 12 tribes of Israel, okay, in which Kevin Samuels would have been considered from the tribe of Judah. But it goes on to say, whose mouths, let me, let me go back to verse 10 again. It says, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. My, 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 yeah. Mm, mm, mm. 
What does it mean, subvert whole houses? Let's go to the meaning of subvert. To overturn or overthrow from the foundation. To ruin whole houses. To pervert or corrupt by an undermining of morals, allegiance, or faith. I'm going to read that one again. To pervert or corrupt by an undermining of morals, allegiance, or faith. So get this, y'all. In Kevin Samuel's very last video that he put out before his demise, this man was telling women not to wait on God, as the world calls him, for a man. Not to wait on God. And then he started to mock and mimic someone praying to God, as the world calls him, for a husband. And he was mocking, speaking in tongues. Mocking a woman, praying to God, speaking in tongues. Telling them not to wait on God for a husband. What are you waiting for is what he said. What are you waiting for? And so that is an undermining of morals and allegiance or faith. And then he implied that it was almost silly to wait for God. What are you waiting for? And then a lot of his videos endorsing men being with prostitutes, hookers. That's another undermining of morals. So to pervert or to corrupt by the undermining of morals, allegiance, or faith. So he's telling people, forget about God. In many cases, he told people that he knew he was going to hell, okay? So this, is what, this wasn't a man of faith, although you have a Christian pastor trying to make it seem like he was a man of God. And he told you with his own words and actions that he was not, that he was not a follower of God. Telling women, what are you praying to God for a husband for? Mocking the Ruach HaKadosh Holy Spirit. But yet you had so-called men of faith saying that he was God's voice in this hour, that God was using him in this hour to help bring families together? Are you kidding? How can you bring families together when you're encouraging the men to be with prostitutes and you're telling the women not to wait for God and also telling women to have sex with more than one man? Try it all out. Unmarried. To pervert or corrupt by an undermining of morals, allegiance, or faith. So let's go back to the scripture and see if this is what this man has done. It says, holding fast the faithful words as he hath been taught, that he may be able to, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. This man's platform was a money-making platform, and that was his goal. There's nothing wrong with making money, but to do what he was doing, subverting whole houses, teaching things which he ought not to teach for filthy lucre's sake, endorsing sin in the camp, in the household, in the family. The scripture says his mouth must be stopped because he was ruining families. Of course, you have people giving testimony saying that he helped them, that he helped their family. How can you help a family when you're telling men they could be with prostitutes? And you're putting value on a person's pocketbook rather than their morals. This man was teaching immorality. Teaching immorality. You can't take one or two videos here and there where he was telling young women 
um, something good, but then in another vein, he's telling them, what are you saving your, your body for? Go and sleep around. You can't talk with a forked tongue like that. You can't have double speech and double talk. Telling people to do one thing, but in another video, you're telling them it's okay to sleep around. It's okay to be with prostitutes. And then telling them that you're going to hell. Telling them you can't, you don't need to be waiting for God. And then mocking the Ruach HaKadosh. What kind of foolishness is that? And what type of pastor would say that this was a man of God? This is why the Most High, mm, 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 my yah. This is why it's important to know and understand Yah's judgment. So-called black people don't want to know nor understand Yah's judgment. This is a frightful thing when a person is judged so openly. The Most High did this very openly and very suddenly. No one was expecting this. And a lot of people have clarified that they are not rejoicing at his death, but they are saying that this man, they are pretty much agreeing with what the scripture says, that his mouth must be stopped because he is subverting whole houses, teaching things which he ought not to teach for filthy lucre's sake. His platform wasn't about building up families as, as some have tried to pre pretend. Some have tried to say that he was trying to help the black community. How can you try and help the black community when you're telling black women that they're literally useless past the age of 35? You were telling men, I can't believe you wanna go up inside of a woman looking like that. Some men like women that are heavy. It's not your place to tell a man what type of woman to, to deal with sexually. If they are married, that's his business. That's their business. But see, you weren't even adding marriage to the to the, the equation in that. When you're telling people to pass it around, telling women ain't no point in holding back now. If a woman decides at some point in her life that she no longer wants to sleep around, she no longer wants to sleep around, and you're telling her it's too late to put a lock on it, that she might as well pass it out, you are not promoting righteousness. So the question again is this, did the Most High shut the mouth of Kevin Samuels for corrupting men and women's thinking? You can't make a woman feel shame because she wants to wait on the Most High for a husband. Don't try to make her feel shame for that. And it's nobody's place to say at what age somebody is useless or undesirable. That just shows that there is a corrupt sexual nature in men if you believe that that should have anything to do with it. Our foremother, Sarah, was well in age. She was a senior by some standards, almost 100 years old when she gave birth to Isaac. Mm, mm, mm. So again, did the Most High shut the mouth of Kevin Samuels? I know some of you aren't going to like this, but you better repent. You better repent for the wickedness in your own heart. The Bible tells us to choose ye this day whom you will serve. Will it be the Most High or will it be man? Many of you men in the manosphere made him your God. You made Kevin Samuels your God. You made him the head of your house. A lot of your decisions in your house were based on things that came out of this man's mouth. You couldn't even adhere to the word and the knowledge of the Most High Yah, the creator of heaven and earth, but you were adhering to what this man had to say. And he was bringing spiritual corruption into your house. He was subverting whole houses for filthy lucre's sake. Mm, mm, mm. And you have people out here trying to pretend like he loved and cared for the black community. Why would you tell people to do wicked things if you really cared? And how could anyone draw the conclusion that his goal was to repair the black community when you were telling them to do sexually deviant things? Things that were contrary to the word of the Most High Yah. That is why 
It referred to them as vain talkers and deceivers. Subverting whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. And again, I'm going to read you the definition of subvert. To pervert or corrupt by an undermining of morals, allegiance, or faith. My, my, my. Those of you who are angry that people are bringing forth this commentary concerning this man, Kevin Samuels, you better cut the ties right now, fall on your knees, pray to the Most High Yah, and repent for that wickedness that you allow to set up in your heart by making this man the head of your household and not the Most High Yah. The scripture says that the head of every man is Hamashiach, or Christ as the world calls him, and the head of woman is man. But when the head is sick, the whole body is sick. If the head is following after a corrupt, a spiritually corrupt, pernicious man, and then he tries to lead his household from there, you're going to pass on wickedness. It is what it is, family. I'm done with this video. In the comment section below, share your thoughts. I'm out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.